speechless. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peggy, and thank you so much for the OSU conference for inviting me today. I hope that the topic that I will be talking about is useful for you and somehow operational. It will be about games focus, but can be also applied for apps, so don't be discouraged by the title of the, of the speech. So the topic that brought us here today is how to boost your game's visibility by promoting live ops through live ops cards and Google Play and in-app events on iOS. So first of all, let me introduce myself, though Peggy did a great job. My name is Claudia Trujillo. I have more than 12 years in marketing experience, uh, 11 years in SEM and paid campaigns, seven in SEO and four in ASO. I'm in love with data and analytics. If not, I would not be able to do my job properly. And I'm currently the ASO expert at Gameloft. I'm one of the two ASO experts at Gameloft. And you can learn more about me on my website, claudiatrujillo.com. So, what to promote on live ops? First of all, live ops are live operations that happen inside your game or your app, and therefore bef between the releases that you will have, you don't need to submit a new build in between to then release this content. This content can be either offers, events, new content and features, major updates, and even pre-registration updates. And so how live ops will help you boost your game's visibility through different types of strategy that you can apply. Live ops cards on Google Play and in app events on iOS will help you boost the reach and visibility because your game will be able to be shown to more people. Therefore, because more people will be seeing these cards for the events that you will be having in game, more people will be able to then download your game, therefore it will increase your user acquisition. And this content will be also available for your relapsed and active users, therefore you can also improve their engage and retain users which can be new, redownloaded, lapsed, or active. And this way, because more people will be playing or more people will be also using your app, it can improve the monetization that you will be having. And so let's talk more about do's and don'ts that you should be doing when promoting live ops on the different stores. Let's start with Google Play. What you can promote through live ops cards. You can promote events, which are time-limited in-game events. You can also do crossover with collabs with other games or also releasing a specific IPs inside your game. You can also do offers, discounts, or even gift items that can be both digital or physical. It can also be services. You can also promote major updates, which can be significant updates in the sense of maybe a new storyline will be happening in your game, a new map, or a new content that can be a seasonal one that would be a big one that your users would not be able to acquire before. And also you have the registration update, which can be also because you're going to be releasing a game, therefore you can have the registration of this game, also of new content that will be promoted global release announcements, instant app demos, and milestones rewards progress. Let's do a quick recap here because if your live ops can be fitted in any of these categories, if it offers something or it's also having a discount or offering a free item, it should be classified like this one because if not, it can be more prone to be rejected by the store. And so how live ops can be visualized inside the Google Play Store? Here, the most important thing that you will need to know on Google Play versus iOS that we will be seeing in a couple um, slides later is that on Google Play, no writing assets is indexed. Therefore, you should be aiming to write those more taking into account a call to action approach, neither than a keyword optimization strategy. And so live ops can be seen as featured, like the example that we have on the screen about the Elden Ring event. Also, once users click on this card, it will have their own page, and it's how the Minion Rush Easter event is seen on the screen. But events can also appear, Live Ops card, sorry, can also appear inside the listing of the game and can also suggest other Live Ops cards that you might be having live at the same time. And in this case, if you went to the Asphalt 9 listing, you will be seeing the Connexir event, but will also be suggesting you to check the Snapdragon Live ops card. And so let's go to iOS. So on iOS, the live ops cards are called in app events, and the type of events that you can release are live events that can be time limited events with new content or new feature that will be 
only available during a period of time, or new in-game goods that you can be acquiring. Also, there are special events, and it's a mix of what we saw before with Google Play, the crossovers with other games or other APs. You can also promote challenges for the user to achieve certain goals inside the game, but not really necessary about reaching certain levels, because that would be the competition type, where you're focusing on the PvP aspect of the game, and you're aiming the user to rank higher in a certain competition ranking that then will be closed after the event uh, it's ended. You can also, as in Google Play, launch major updates to promote new features or new content. And here you will be having, for example, the differentiation between releasing new characters or new actionable figures inside your game. Whereas if you are re releasing a new season or new content that it's more about, for example, new Easter content like we saw before for the Minion Rush event, that would be counted as new season and not as a major update for Easter. And lastly, you can also premiere content. So if you're having the release of the game, you can premiere it on the store before it's officially launched. And you can also premiere new and unique content that will appear inside your game before it happens. And so on the App Store, how you should be aiming to work on these in-app event cards is that the event name and the short description are indexed. Therefore, you should be taking into account which is your current keyword strategy for which keywords you are currently indexing and ranking for, especially the top ones. And also be sure that you're also talking about some key element about what your in-app event is about. Therefore, you will be able to appear as a search result for those keywords. And so on the screen, you can see an example of how an in-app event card is open. And there you can see how the Asphalt 9 Connexig event uh, was seen when you click on that. Then, as I mentioned before, the keywords will be indexed. And so on the third screen, on the, on the screen, sorry, uh, you can see the example of if I search for the Connexig um, keyword, which was a collab with another brand, you will be seeing the Asphalt 9 Live Ops uh, in-app event card of the iOS as a search result, in this case, the top one. And then also, if we went to the listing of Asphalt 9, we will be seeing the events being listed there. In this case, you can see the Snapdragon, and this is a carousel. And if you have more than one in-app event live at a time, you can just scroll like the screenshots that you will do, and you can see the other ones that you will be having. And lastly, you can also be featured, like on Google Play, for your in-app event. And in this case, on Asphalt 9, we were featured for the content of the new season. And so, which are the live ops key optimizations and settings that you should be taking into account when you're going to the consoles and setting those up? Let's start with Google Play. So, as I mentioned before, uh, writing assets are not the top ones because they're not based on the keyword strategy that you will be using, but you should be aiming for a CTA to engage the users and to catch the user's attention really quickly. Also, as I mentioned before, you need to select clearly the event type that adapts best for the content you will be offering. And then we have two new elements that are really important, which I have not talked about before. So we have the preview event, which means that you can preview your live ops cards and will play or the in-app event on iOS, which we'll be seeing before, after, sorry, about um, you will have, obviously, a date that this content will be released in the build but you can promote it before it goes live, and so it will pick the algorithm to get to start knowing what your content will be about, that you will be promoting it. It will reach more users, and also users can click on the reminder button. Therefore, when this is released, it will receive a notification from the store about this content be available, and also, they don't need to do that only. They can also download the game, and therefore, they can already start uh, hooking up the game before this content goes live. Then, kind of related to that, we have the priority level. So there are three types of priority levels. We have the normal and the high, where there is no limitations about how many normal or, live or high priority live ops cards we can submit to the Google Play Store. But we have another type of priority, which is the very high priority, which you can only submit one per quarter calendar. 
And so we also have some other writing assets and visual assets. For visual assets, you can add the statics, but also video that it's on the YouTube, like the video you will be having on the listing. And kind of the same thing that goes with writing assets. Visual assets should be catching the user's attention really quick because you will be scrolling through the store. Therefore, a lot of content will be seen by the user and you need to make sure that the user will be seeing your content and like on the rest of the listings, they will be aiming to then download your game or click on the reminder button. And let's go to iOS. So an App Store Connect, the in-app event setup looks like this. And so, as I mentioned before, the event name and the short description are the ones that you should be taking more into account because the keywords here will be key for your visibility on the search results and can also increase, obviously, the rankings of the other keywords that you will be having on the listing for the time being that this NAP event card will be shown. Then we have the batch, which is a type of uh, in-app event card that we will be submitting, which we have already discussed those. And we also have the preview event which, as I mentioned before, it's really important. And especially on iOS, you can then check how many people were pushed this notification and from this notification that the uh, store is sending the user, how many of those did open the game if they were already an active or labs user, or how many people did acquire the game from this. And we also have the visual assets. And uh, here we have the statics. And you can see the preview of how the card will look like if the game is featured or how it will look like inside the listing, but also how the uh, in-app event card will look when it is open. Other elements are the event purpose, which you can select to who you are going to be showing this in-app event card. On Google Play, you're going to be aiming for everyone in the store, and you cannot control this. But on iOS, you can select if it's for all users, if it's only for first-time downloads, if it's for lapse users, or if it's for active users. Then we also have the priority, which here we only have normal and high priority. And the priority, as I mentioned for Google Play, there are no limits on how many in-app events you can submit for each of those priorities. We also have the event deep link, which is something that Google Play doesn't have. Event deep links are universal links that first you need to configure and the build of your game to make sure that the build is going to be able to read these links. These links need to make sure that you are redirecting the user to the specific part of the game where this event is happening. If not, the store will not um, approve this and you will be rejected and will need to submit it again. And then once you have already configured on your build that your game can read universal links, you can acquire those through different platforms. One of those could be Firebase. Then we have the event in app purchase gate, which means that you are going to be telling the store, and obviously for the people that will be seeing this in app event card, that they need to do an in app purchase or a subscription in order to participate in this in app event. And lastly, something that iOS does that Google Play doesn't is that they will give you an event URL which you can use, for example, in user acquisition campaigns, in influencer activations, in other marketing activations that you will be using in order to then uh, gather more people that will be seeing this card and then will be coming towards your game to download it because you're promoting some extra content that otherwise might be lost on the store. And so once we have the strategy, once we have this done the setup, let's go on how after it has gone live, how we should measure layoffs results and its impact. So we have kind of two groups of KPIs and where to measure the impact of those. So from the consoles, you can gather the reach, acquisitions, conversion rate, and monetization that your layoffs card or the in-app event card has had. And because more people will be seeing your game, more people will be able to then download your game, it will be uh, affecting maybe the ratings and reviews on the sense that maybe more people will be then launching the prompt to rate your game. Or also, if there are some problems in the game because the coding might be blocked because more people are playing at the same time, maybe the server is not working properly, it can also affect to Android Vitals and also crashes on iOS. So that can also be something that you should be um, aiming to analyze and to take into account. And then at the same time, you should be monitoring how those Vitals are also affecting the user's feedback on ratings and reviews. Therefore, for 
third party tools, we can then analyze for iOS, which is the keywords impact that your in-app event card is having. You can also uh, check the category rankings, which understands that because you should be having more acquisitions from people, therefore your category rankings might be going high. And also you can check if your in-app event card has been featured on any of the stores and if those are also affecting the category rankings themselves. And so this is how the reports on Google Play Store would look like for LiveOps cards, obviously with content, which I'm not showing, but you're seeing here the KPIs. And so the main KPIs that you can check from the console are the total unit viewers for both worldwide and for the country filter, also which is a the total unique converters worldwide and per country, which is the amount of acquisitions that this LiveOps card has acquired, opens, and updates, and it's not only the number per the total, but also per day. And so on iOS, we have two different menus where we can check the KPIs of the reporting of in-app events. Once you enter the acquisition menu, you will be seeing something like the one that you have on the screen, but obviously with data and with graphs uh, all full. And so the main key data points that you should be checking are the total event impressions and also for unique devices or not unique devices, per traffic source, per country, worldwide. And also the same thing goes for product page views that you can filter the same way. And you will also be able to analyze total downloads, first time downloads and redownloads by source type and country. And as I mentioned before, you can also check the app opens of people that have your game download there. Therefore, they are active users or lapsed users, and so once they see this card, they are opening the game. Therefore, also people that have to click on the remind me about this content can also be push this notification from the store, and then you can check how many people have seen this notification and how many people have clicked on the notification, and you can filter those per source type and country. And lastly, you will have the total event interactions. And this is how the report looks when you click on the name of the in-app event card, and then you go to the acquisitions menu. But this is how the menu will, looks like when you go to the analytics and then to the metrics menu. And so there are three columns of filters that I'm sure that all of you are familiar with. And so from the first column, you have a specific filters uh, that are about in-app events, like you can see on the left of the screen. But then on the second and the third column, you can then click on which is the name of the in-app event that you want to really analyze more in depth. And then on the first column, you will be gathering the filters like when you do any other analysis of the game. And so let's do a quick LiveOps recap about what's the strategy and what you should be taking into account when you're going to be working with this type of content. So first of all, make sure that you select your live ops type and priority wisely with what's the content that you're going to be showing the user, what's the content that you're going to be offering and any type of user, and what's the store offering you to select. Then target the right users. As we saw for iOS, you can target different type of users, whereas in Google Play, you can only aim for everyone. And as much as you can, you should be previewing your live ops on both the stores if that's possible for your team. Then optimize writing and visual assets with the characteristics that each of the stores have. And lastly, make sure that you measure KPIs so you know what's the strategy that you started with, what is the element that you have implemented, and what's the thing that has worked well, and what's the thing that has not worked that well as you expected. Therefore, for the next time, you can improve that. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, I will be free to ask those uh -huh. down there.